lady from Michigan, Mrs. Miller, for five minutes. Madam Speaker, the American health care system is clearly in need of reform. Yet at the same time, our system of health care continues to be the envy of the world in producing life-saving innovations in the pharmaceutical industry, in medical procedures, and in treatment. Congress certainly must act to help bring down costs and expand access to health insurance while preserving the quality of care patients receive in this great, great nation. I've heard many of my Democratic colleagues, and certainly the President, speak about the need to increase competition in the health insurance costs, and I could not agree more. But where I part company with my Democratic colleagues is in their prescription for the problem. The way they want to increase competition is to create a new government insurance company better known as a public option to provide this competition. They've demonized insurance companies in an effort to build support for this misguided plan, even though recent public opinion surveys have shown that over 80 percent of Americans are satisfied with their current plan. My concerns with the public option, which are shared, I think, by huge amounts of American Americans, is that it would have an unfair advantage that could crowd out private health care, and it would put huge new costs on the American taxpayers. For months, the President has said, if you like what you have, you can keep it. Then just last week, the President changed that, and he said instead, there is nothing in this bill that would force you or your employer to change what you have. Well, it may be true that nothing will force you or your employer into the public option, but the bill before the House has perverse incentives to encourage your employer to do just that. The bill mandates individuals to purchase insurance, and it requires large employers to provide care for their employees. Businesses that do not provide health care insurance will be taxed at 8 percent of their payroll as a penalty. And most employers will tell you that health care costs typically run about 14 to 16 percent of their payroll. So businesses that are struggling to make ends meet will now face a choice either continue to pay 15 percent of their payroll to provide coverage for their employees or just dump them out onto the public plan and take the 8 percent penalty. Well, that is a pretty easy business decision to make. Unfortunately, it has very broad implications for their employers, and I believe this nation will go to a government-run health care plan very, very quickly as a result of that. Madam Speaker, there's a better way to reduce the cost of insurance at virtually no cost to the government. And that is to simply allow individuals and businesses to purchase health care insurance across state lines. Lifting this restriction would bring hundreds, if not thousands, of new competitors into the private marketplace to compete for business. This would absolutely reduce costs, and it's a simple change which we could enact immediately. The President actually made an analogy to private auto insurance, and I would respectfully remind the President that auto insurance can be purchased across state lines, and there is no public option in auto insurance. The market regulates itself to keep costs down. Additionally, millions of Americans today have their health care covered by a health savings account. If H.R. 32 is enacted, health savings accounts will be gone, and those who utilize them will be forced to change their coverage. So again, this is actually less choice and less competition in the health care industry. I was very glad last week when the President said he would look at pilot programs with regard to medical liability reform. For too long, trial attorneys have looked at doctors as ATM machines and have filed countless frivolous lawsuits. This has driven up costs by forcing insurance companies to settle because these suits cost too much to fight regardless of their merit, and the costs are passed along to doctors in the form of higher premiums and ultimately higher health insurance costs to consumers. It's also made it very difficult for specialty doctors like OBGYNs to practice, and it limits access, particularly in rural areas. Many states have enacted caps on non-economic damage, damages, and in every place where this has happened, doctors have moved in, lawyers have moved out, and costs have gone down. So I was very disappointed when the president said over the weekend that he doesn't believe caps work. Respectfully, Mr. President, actually caps on non-economic damages is that actually is medical liability reform. Madam Speaker, the American people are rightfully concerned about how any reform will impact out-of-control federal spending and our exploding federal deficit. It just stretches credibility when people are told that we can create a public option, expand access and availability of care, and we can do so without dramatically increasing taxes or adding to the federal debt. 
Well, you can't get something for nothing, particularly when the government is involved. And many seniors find it difficult to believe that we can pay for some of this by reducing spending on Medicare by $600 billion and more and not impact their level of care. The proponents say these cuts are just waste, fraud, and abuse. Well, if there is that much waste, fraud, and abuse, we should be attacking that. Madam Speaker, we can do better, and for the sake of the American people, we must do better. I yield back. The gentlewoman's time has expired. The chair now recognizes the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Roy.